Hey everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dancefish.com. I am very excited because today I get to show you all the progress in the new fish warehouse we're building. And we're just about done. We have water in the tanks, the system's flowing. Get to show you all that cool stuff. But I thought we'd start out here because this is where we started this journey, just out on dirt, you know, waiting for construction to begin. Well, construction is finalized almost. We're almost to the end and this is the little river that we're drawing the water from for the aquariums and uh, this over here here's our new warehouse here's the little creek we've created all this water flowing here all of this is water leaving the aquariums from the warehouse so, so it leaves the warehouse comes over here into this artificial creek we've made this way it uh, can kind of, you know, just nice and gentle and pretty return back to the creek. We didn't want just a pipe like sticking out in the river there. We wanted something nice coming down. So when I look at this, I get a sense of the volume of water we're changing. Like I, I didn't really quite get it till I came out here and saw all the water flowing through there. It's pretty impressive. So um, let's go up and show you what we got going on inside there. Don't mind all the PVC. We'll get it cleaned up. <laughs> Come on in. All right, so we've got the tanks up, we've got the water flowing, we've got the air in them. What we haven't done is put the uh, diffuser on the air pump's bleed valve. So that's really super loud. So I'm actually gonna go turn that off right now so it quiets things down in here a bit so uh, you can hear me better. should be a little better. Now, that sucker, the, the transformer there, <clears throat> that creates a little bit of a buzzing sound. A plan to reduce that is to put like a, a heavy theater curtain kind of dampening thing in front of it. Um, this big, big boy pump makes a little sound, but it's, it's not that loud. On video, it might be kind of loud, especially since we have like a shotgun mic pointing this way. Uh, let me show you the system. So this is where the water leaving the aquariums goes before it's cleaned up and returned to the creek. There she is. That's all the water leaving the aquariums. All right, all these are, are running. Um, I guess I could explain some of these. Let's check the temperatures on the tanks first. I'm curious what we're at. So here's what's going on. All these tanks are getting about a gallon a minute of water coming in from the creek um, to fill the tanks. We do have an issue. Can you see it if you look up at this angle? Can you see all those micro bubbles on video? So. If you've ever turned your tap on at your house, especially in cold weather, you probably notice your glass, if you're filling up like a glass to get a drink, um, fills with all these fine little bubbles. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that you've probably got a little uh, air injector screen on your tap um, that just makes it like that. But in addition to that, your municipal water has a lot of pressure and different things that have happened chemically to it to make it good for your municipal system. And so that's all gassing off and creating micro bubbles. So I didn't know if using creek water, if we would have micro bubbles or not, but it turns out we do. And I mean, it makes sense. It, water, anytime you compress it, you dissolve gas into it. And anytime you heat it, you release gas from it. So. We're taking cold water from the creek. We are compressing it slightly to get it up into the warehouse. The pump going through the pipes creates a little pressure. So that makes gas get into it. And then when we heat it up and release it into these tanks, a lot of that gas is being released in, in the form of all these little bubbles. So we 
you found that out. I did not know how much of a problem that would be using creek water versus municipal water, but it, it's, it's a problem, I think. But I don't like it because what it ends up doing is, see this? This is like froth. If you've ever gone to a little creek or river and you've gone to a section where the, the flow is very slow and you get a real slow eddy, you'll see this out in nature, that, that froth. What that is, is protein. Um, it's acting as a protein skimmer. All these little micro bubbles are collecting the protein and floating it to the top. And it's unsightly and I just don't like it. So um, we're gonna, we've talked to the engineer and we're gonna create a basically uh, air removal, micro bubble removal station over here to take care of that problem. But besides that, um, the system's pretty much up and running. Um, I'll show you what's going on with the UV sterilizers in a minute too. There's something else we need to do there. But this is the one issue we've run into that we were like hoping we wouldn't have. <laughs> we knew there would be some bubbles, but we didn't know it would be to this extent. So um, we have a plan B for that and that's going into effect now. So pretty soon we should not have that. And let me show you, um, well, first let's see how warm we are. Yeah, 80 degrees. So this system is able to take um, water from the creek at right now about 35 degrees, I believe, and heat it to 80 degrees and use very little energy because of that heat exchanger we're using in the boiler loop that we're running, which is very, very efficient. So. It's going, we've got the water coming in, we've got it going out, we've got the whole loop heated. Um, everything's working. So we've got to remove some bubbles and then, uh, and then I think long-term will be good. I was really happy because right now there's 400, over 400 valves in the facility and we had to put each of those in by hand. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan and I, Random Arms, uh, did that and neither of, of us are plumbers. I'm happy to report there's no leaks. Um, when we first turned the system on, there was a couple uh, little leaks, and all we had to do was tighten some of the valves that were leaking a little bit. It's just a really slow thing. There's this little bubble of water to come up over like 10 or 20 seconds and then drip down on a couple of them. But all it took was a, a tighten of that valve and it was fine. We only had one problem, which was there was a, a hole that had a little micro crack in the PVC. And uh, so we had to actually cut that piece out and you know put in a coupler and, and fix that. But besides that one, all the rest are functioning as they should. Um, so that's awesome. Something else we found is there are about, I think five tanks that, six actually tanks that came with manufacturer airs on them. They're not sealed all the way. So we filled them up and we started getting leaks. So we've emptied most of those and uh, only to strip the silicone and reseal those. There's just no way around it. So that's a bummer, but we'll deal with it. But so we're, we're at the point where there's these little problems, right? These little bugs that were working out of the system, but, but nothing, nothing major. So really happy about that. So I think it's going to work really well. Just got to take care of the bubbles. Let me show you how we know this will work. Um, come on over. Okay, so this white stuff on the glass, that's uh, dust from drilling the glass. It's just really fine silica sand. We haven't gone through and wiped all that off yet. So ignore the white blotches on the front of all the tanks. That's just sand. Um, but if you look here, you'll see in this tank, there's a whole bunch of micro bubbles. If you look here, you'll see in this tank, there's barely a couple of them in there. And what we've done on these three tanks, Random Arm set up an experiment where we choked back the flow in there. And as you can see, looking up at those pipes, the flow is just not high enough uh, to push the air down. So instead of coming out as micro bubbles, it's congregating into large bubbles and occasionally a large bubble will be ejected, which is fine. So how do we do that and keep our flow up high? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take over here in this area. Can you hear okay with those? Okay. Over here in this area that we have spare, it's kind of a flex space. We're going to take um, a big 16 inch piece of PVC. We're going to run the water down to it. 
And as it goes through that big PVC pipe that'll be vertical, probably, um, that'll slow the flow way down. A 12 inch pipe, at our, at our pressures and our flows, does about a foot of flow every second, which is pretty flow, slow. The 16 inch pipe will do even less. So we don't know how many of those we'll need yet, but the engineer's figuring that out. But basically the water will come down in a six inch pipe and then go through a much larger pipe and that flow will be very slow. So it'll be slow enough that the, the bubbles can collect at the top of that big pipe and we'll have some vents where it can just, the air can come out. And uh, so we'll basically do what we're doing on that tank that does not have any bubbles in it, but on a much larger scale. And that should do it. And if one of those isn't enough, we have space here for like six. We could do up to six of those big pipes. So we'll be able to take care of it. So that's the, that's one thing that we had in the back of our minds, but I was hoping wouldn't be a problem, but it's a problem. The thing that we thought might be a problem and so far is not though, is this. Ooh, we're gonna get real loud here. Let's go this way so the mic isn't pointing at that. So this is our, in, our sediment filter for the incoming water. Well, it's not accurate. It's showing 68 degrees, but I know it's about 35 inside. So. <laughs> Um, and what we didn't know is if this would fill up with gunk really fast. Like, would we have to clean this out every half hour? Would we have to clean it out twice a day? Like, we didn't know. And if it was going to be too often, we were going to have to get a big bead filter right here, or sand filter. And that's uh, very expensive. And uh, you have to have an air compressor to help it and all that stuff. We wanted to try to avoid that. Luckily, this thing has been running for over 24 hours, solid without um, any breaks, and there's no back pressure in it, which means it has not clogged yet, which is great. So we'll see how many days we can run this for. I'm hoping to get a few days out of it before we have to like shut it off, take out the bags, and, and put in new ones. The bag is like a big filter sock, basically. It just uh, collects gunk. And if you look here, Here's how we know we're good. So this is the pressure of the water coming into this unit. It is right now at like 37 and a half PSI. 42? Oh, we're at, oh, I'm looking backwards, aren't I? I, I was subtracting. Yeah, thank you. At about, uh, call it 43 PSI. And then the, ink, the water leaving the unit, see that? It only dropped like half a PSI maybe which means this sucker is not creating any head loss. So as the water goes through here, it's not creating back pressure, which means it's not clogged, which is awesome. So that's how we kind of gauge things. You'll see these pressure gauges on all of our equipment or a lot of our equipment, so we can see what's the differential. And if the differential is high, we know we need to clean this filter or this filter or service something. So. That's how we kind of know when something needs to be maintained. Now there's also a computer system. Um, there's all these gauges and temperature sensors and pressure sensors and, and stuff scattered all around the system. And that displays on a computer system for us. So we can look at any point of the system at any time and kind of see what's going on. So that's cool. Um, one bummer, as you can see down here, this is kind of wet. We filled these up, we got them going. This sucker has a leak. It has a leak down underneath. The, uh, the company's working on getting us a replacement and it looks like they're gonna cover the cost and honor the warranty and all that. So I think we'll be okay, but it's just a bummer. So right now the whole system's being run on one filter, which we did not want to do. But the good news is we found out we can run the whole system on one filter. So, um, so that's good. What it means though is it's creating instead of like maybe 20 PSI or 15 PSI, that's why the system is like 42 right now. Because we're forcing all that water through these small three inch pipes to come into this one filter. As soon as this replacement comes, then the pressure in the whole system should drop a lot, which will, will help the long life of, of this plumbing. 
This is the only piece that is not fully functional right now besides the micro bubble removal they will we'll have to build. And that's because they did not realize when they put this in that it needs a special voltage. Um, so the electrician will be here Monday, it's Saturday now. Um, they'll be here Monday, can solve transformer so we can get the proper voltage to this unit and we can actually put the bulbs in there. Now the water is flowing through it. It's watertight, the water is flowing through it, but we don't have bulbs in the sockets powered on yet. It's because we don't want to run them at the wrong voltage and create a problem. Um, and this is really cool. Let's come on over here. So this shows us what's going on in our boiler loop. Right now the water is coming in at 75 degrees. It's leaving at 80 degrees, which makes sense because the tanks are at about 80 degrees right now. And the exhaust temperature is 76 degrees. That means we're only losing four degrees. These are almost 100% efficient. We're only losing four degrees between the water temp and the exhaust temp. And this thing, this runs really cool. So they're very good at taking all the heat energy and injecting it right into the water. We aren't wasting hardly any energy going out the exhaust, which I'm really happy with. As you can see, this one is running 100%. This one is running at 0% right now. And they, they switch back and forth. So sometimes they're both running uh, full tilt if they have to heat a lot to catch up. Sometimes they run barely at all. They just turn on and off to maintain the proper heat going to our aquariums. Um, there is a temperature sensor here and that, and that tells those boilers how warm is the, the water going to the aquariums and so if they, can, they know what to do to uh, maintain that, which is super cool. Um, oh, this. You know what, there's one more thing. We've learned a lot about noise. When we first turned some of this equipment on, it was very noisy. And so we've been doing our best to dampen the noise because A, it's not fun to work in a very, very loud place, right? And B, we want to be able to make videos in here and not have it be super loud. It's, it's pretty loud right now, but it's a lot quieter than it used to be. Let me give you an example. When these were first installed, oh, oh this one's not running. We'll have to do this one. When these were first installed, that's the noise that was coming out. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like a high kind of annoying pitch. And when they're both going, it's really loud. But just by putting on this little piece of, uh, I don't know, sheet metal, just that angle, takes the pitch down a lot so it's less loud. Now it's still too loud, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have these actually vented outside so we don't get that loud rushing air sound. But um, it was interesting to see what a difference just a little piece of sheet metal at an angle would make. Here, same thing. I don't know why I'm using this like a little teddy bear. I'm carrying it around with me. I love my thermometer, what can I say? <laughs> um, this same thing, when we first turned this on, it sounded like a freight train whistle or something. It was like, well, it wasn't high pitched, but it's really loud. So they put on this angled sheet metal and now it's, it's nice, and, nice and quiet, just like a heat exchanger should be. So a couple things we have to do is um, with those boilers, vent to the outside so that sound goes away. With that air pump, put the uh, diffuser on it. And if that's not quiet enough, vent that directly outside so that noise goes away. The only thing that we can't really vent outside or cover that's really noisy is that, uh, is that a transformer or a transducer, I don't know, that box um, that powers and controls that white box on the wall that powers and controls the pump outside that's bringing the water into the warehouse. So, but I think hanging a thick pleated curtain like if we use in theater to dampen noise 
a thick uh, curtain like that right over the front of it. I'm hopeful that'll help cut that sound. So that's kind of our plan for uh, improving noise in, in the space. So a few things to do are micro bubble removal, noise dampening, and patch some tanks, but, um, and get those UV filters up. But we're pretty darn close, the system's going. It's nice to see that it is actually working. <laughs> like, I tell you turn it on and see with your own eyes, right? It's all theoretical, so there's a lot of nerves about that, but it's actually working, and uh, we think the fish will be really happy in it, so. Yeah, that's it. Um, before I go, I just want to thank everyone that supported us. There's been a lot of you that have been with us throughout this journey in many ways, helping, spreading the word, supporting, just giving us encouragement, uh, giving us money, um, telling your friends about dancefish.com where you can buy the bestest fish ever and all that stuff. So to each and every one of you, thank you, thank you for helping us on this journey. And I uh, can't wait till next month to show you this place without micro bubbles, a lot quieter, and full of fish. Until then, I hope you have a good one.